Hey, what's going on folks? It's Larry Packmaster's Dog Training. I want to jump right into a subject that I get contacted about literally every single day. Every day. There's not a day that goes by I don't get contacted about it. As a matter of fact, you know, 30 seconds before I started making this video, I just got another message. And I think this is something that just about every dog trainer on the planet will understand and agree with, okay? So, the calls I receive is you have people that have a dog. They decide to get a new puppy, okay? They introduce the new puppy into their home and their puppy and their old dog are best friends. They allow things to go on that they shouldn't. They allow things to take place that shouldn't. And then all of a sudden one day, the all out brawls and fights start and people get confused. They don't understand why they said it, they said it came out of nowhere. They were best friends. And this almost always starts between nine months and 18 months old. Nine, 10 months is where most of the calls I get. As a matter of fact, most people when I talk to, I'll usually ask them, say, was he around nine, 10 months old? And you'd be amazed how many times they go, oh my gosh, yeah, he is. He just turned nine months old. It's real common, guys. And here's the thing. When you allow a puppy into your home with an older dog, and you allow that puppy to do what it wants and interact how it wants and there's no rules and no boundaries and no structure set right from the start and the puppy has free reign to you know to everything that puppy is going to take to that dog a lot more than they're going to take to you almost always and that older dog is going to show patience usually that it won't to an adult dog so what happens is when that puppy starts maturing and starts leaving puppyhood and starts entering that adolescent stage, now those things that the older dog tolerated or you thought were cute, all of a sudden is not. And things go bad really, really fast. And this is a constant, guys. And I know dog trainers that disagree on everything, I can almost guarantee you everyone understands what I'm talking about here. I'll give you an example from personal experiences. Years ago when my dad was still alive, um, for, for those that know Bear, the German Shepherd I had, he was my dad's dog. We took Bear when my dad died. But I remember being home one year and, you know, my dad loved that dog. They were inseparable. They were best pals. And my brother got a pit bull. My brother lived downstairs in my parents' house. And he got a little pit bull puppy, male, two males. You know, the pit bull was a male, Bear was a male. And I remember being at home one day, sitting in the yard with my dad, who really loved the dogs, always loved dogs. And I watched these dogs interact. And I told my dad, I said, you got to stop. You can't allow this. You know, this is going to turn ugly. And, you know, my dad, just like most people, nah, they're best pals. These dogs love each other. They'd never do anything to each other. I said, dad, it's going to go bad. Please listen to me for once when it comes to the dog stuff. It's going to, nah, never never they love each other well you know what happened from there okay he calls me one day when i'm at home well it happened he was in the yard and out of nowhere it got ugly now you're dealing with two insanely powerful dogs trying to kill each other and my dad's trying to get them apart and you know what that's like it doesn't work okay Eventually, somehow, he was able to get them separated just long enough to throw, I think, my brother's dog in the pool. He threw him in the pool, got Bear inside real quick, and then got the dog out. So, for the rest of my dad's life, until he died in 2009, the way they had to operate was there was a sign on the back door that led to the yard. And that sign either said, Bear is in the yard or Zeus is in the yard. That's how they had to live. Now they had to be deathly scared those dogs ever came in contact. Now, when my dad was dying, and I've talked about this before, I promised him I would take Bear. Now, mind you, I had three other powerful dogs in my home, and Bear was fairly dog aggressive, you know, and that's how he lived. So when my dad died, we went up to New Jersey, we took Bear, we brought him home. Well, I'm not going to keep Bear separated. He's going to be interacted with my family. You know, he's going to be put into the, to the whole mix right from day one. So what I did with Bear was I put him on a leash. Uh, I think at the time my dad probably had a, a choke collar on him or something. I don't even know. It's not important. And I started walking away from my home, walking down the street, and I told my wife, let the dogs out. And when the dogs came running over to greet him, he erupted. He exploded and tried to get to him. I didn't do anything except control him and not allow him. And I kept moving forward, kept walking. 
as the dogs approached again, he exploded again. That was what he was used to doing, okay? So as we walked and walked and walked, the explosions got a little less, my dogs got a little less pushy, and by the time we got through my neighborhood, which was roughly 20 minutes, when I got back to my home, I let Bear off the leash. And he was running around and he was fine with the dogs. I had just shown him a different picture and I let him know right from the start, it's not gonna happen. Things don't work like that here. Okay, so there were no corrections, there were no punishment. There was just a very calm confidence of leadership that the dog understands and needs and requires to get along in life. They require it, they have to have it, okay? So what happened the second I brought, and I'm sorry for the folks that have heard this, but it's important. The, what happened was the second I brought the dogs in the home, we came in through my garage and then right into the kitchen and Bear went into the corner of the kitchen and laid down. First time he was ever in the house. As we came in, Bruno, my Rottweiler that most of you know, extremely, extremely social, well-behaved dog, him and Bear did not like each other right from the start. It was obvious. They did not like each other. As we're walking through the kitchen, Bruno's kind of at my right side and he looks over at Bear. He glares over at Bear. At that moment, I jumped on Bruno like a hobo on a hot dog. I exploded and I let him know that shit will not be tolerated here. It's not going to happen. Because that little look, that challenge that he gave Bear is all we need for things to escalate. And it was very important for Bruno to understand you don't run things here. I do, my wife does, my kids do, okay? Which was odd because Bruno rarely acted like that. But it was important for Bruno to see that, but it was more important for Bear to see that. He had to know, he doesn't have to worry about anything. I'll take care of everything, all right? So I get questions constantly on how do I have big powerful male dogs in my house. My dogs are not spayed or neutered now. My dogs are intact. I've never had a dog fight in my, with my own dogs, ever. Now, one time, never. Until the day that Bear died, Bear and Bruno did not like each other. They never liked each other, but yet they never got into a fight. We'd leave them out in the yard and you'd watch them lay in the sun. They were next to each other, but one would face one way and one would face the other. They just didn't like each other, but they respected each other. And there was no battle for so-called dominance there, okay? So another question I would get, especially when I had all those dogs, who's the dominant dog? There is no dominant dog. There is a dominant dog. I have failed. And that's where the fights will come from when the other dog decides, you know what? I'm sick of this dude running the show. I'm going to take over here. That's where the, the fights come from. You see, but no, none of the dogs were in charge or dominant. I was in charge. My wife was in charge. My kids were in charge. You know, when Renzo was two years old and, you know, just barely walking around the house, if, if one of my dogs was laying in the doorway of the kitchen, Renzo at two years old knew he was not allowed to step over them. He would tell those dogs to move and the dog would get up and move and let him through. That's very important in the dog's world. Because if I allow Renzo to step over that dog, then that's that dog's space, okay? They win. In their mind, they become the one in charge. But to this day, my kids can control big, powerful, strong dogs because they're respected, okay? And in the dog world, a very calm, quiet confidence is what truly leads dogs. That's what they need. That's, that's what is needed, all right? So you folks that raise these puppies, you have to understand you're not raising a puppy. You're raising a dog. And if you're okay with the things your puppy does now, are you going to be okay with it when it's a full-grown dog? Because most likely your other dog's not going to be. And you're going to run into problems. Sometimes, I think other dog trainers may understand this. You get sick and tired of being the bearer of bad news. You get sick and tired of being the asshole or the preacher. And you don't want to be harping on people all the time. So I see a lot of things now with people that I don't say nothing. Because it gets old. You don't want to constantly be correcting people and telling them you're doing this wrong. So I just, I, I, I don't do it. But guys, this has to be said. It has to be discussed. If you have a puppy, you're raising a dog. Okay? Eventually, the things that your older dog deals with and accepts... They're not going to. And then you're going to live 
by separating your dogs constantly and alternating them in a crate or in a room and that's no way to live you have to start taking control now okay yourself your spouse your kids the people have to be in control of those dogs and it's not a, a dictatorship and a forceful thing you know you're going to get the best results with a very calm quiet confidence that's what dogs need but you have to understand what you do all right you have to so you know mango's five months old and i just started giving her a lot more freedom with the dogs off leash out in the yard and stuff you know and and she wants to be a pain in the ass and when she goes over and tries to start mauling Luca or, or Buddy, I have to step in there. I can't allow that, you know, because Buddy's never going to do anything. You know, he's he might try to hit her with his purse maybe. I don't know. Luca's very patient with Mango. And Luca's usually not patient with puppies or dogs. He's very neutral to dogs. He'll accept any dog, but don't push him because he will light you up. He's extremely patient with Mango, and so I have to step in there and, and represent him. So he doesn't have to. You understand what I'm saying? You have to, guys. As far as me, rules, there is no play or roughhousing inside the home. Inside the home, it's calmness. That is it. That's simple. So when folks say, how can you live with a dog like Luca? Luca is a normal dog inside the home. All my dogs have always been. It's very simple. Inside the home represents be relaxed, be calm. There is no wrestling and roughhousing inside the home. That's for outside, Okay. And with that being said, if you allow that rough play and you have a puppy, just know eventually it's going to change. And once you enter that area, it can be very difficult to deal with. Very difficult to deal with. So again, I think this is something that most dog trainers will agree with and we all see on a, on a daily basis. Like I said, right before this video, I got another message. Okay, German Shepherd. Everything was fine. Best friends. All of a sudden, boom, out of the blue, they're killing each other. You got a problem now. You have to avoid those problems, okay, folks? You're raising a dog, not a puppy. Please understand that. I hope this helps. Peace.